All right, so today I'm going to do a video response to Patriot in the Dark, who asked us to disassemble a firearm blindfolded. Now, as you can see, and I'm going to lean down, I should be in view of the camera, but I am completely blindfolded. And if for some reason that wasn't in view of the camera, you're just going to have to trust me because I'm not going to know this until after I'm done and go back to editing. But I am going to disassemble. This is my Colt 1911 Commander. Uh, this is probably one of the most uh, familiar guns, or I should say this is one of the guns I'm most familiar with because I bought this the day I turned 21. And I have carried it off and on for the last seven years. So I'm fairly familiar with this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble it. I'm going to talk about it and describe it the best I can using just my hands. So what I'll start with is how I like to start disassembling this is actually the gun's already cocked, but I usually cock the hammer if it's not cocked because it takes some of the pressure off of the slide. It makes it a little bit easier to run the slide because you are going to have to uh, move the slide around to disassemble it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by depressing on the front of the gun. I usually, if the, I'm going to have the magazine well facing me, and I'm going to press on the bottom of the front of the slide, there is the capture uh, little cup or cap or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure it has a correct name. The For the recoil spring, I'm going to push down on that, which is going to take pressure off of the barrel bushing. Now the barrel bushing, if I rotate it all the way to the left that it will go, I can then completely release the uh, recoil spring and actually given it about a quarter turn, the cap for the recoil spring comes off. So what I will then do is I will then rotate the barrel bushing all the way to the right and then the barrel bushing lifts up and out of the front of the gun. So I'm going to set that there, that, that's next to the cup. So after that, what I can then do is the slide is now completely freed up. Okay, slide's running, no tension on the spring, no nothing. The barrel is also uh, just being held in by the pin and the spring, as you can see, is freed up. So now to, to continue, I have to take out the takedown pin. Now this is the pin that gives the notorious idiot scratch. Uh, mine does have it. You know, this is the first gun, handgun I ever bought. And back then, the inter YouTube wasn't nearly as big as it was, so I didn't go on and look up and realize that hey, the you know the correct way to completely disassemble the gun and reassemble it without putting the idiot scratch on it was different than what I did. But it's honest wear on the gun, so it doesn't bother me. That's exactly why I just spent the last five minutes talking about it. Okay, maybe like a minute, but whatever. All right, so I'm going to take out the re the takedown pin, and what I'm going to do is, you're supposed to line this up, but because I can't see where the hole is in the slide to line it up, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to push on the takedown pin, and I'm going to run the slide back and forth until it slips into the notch that's for the takedown pin. Now I just did that so right now actually the slide is locked in place by the takedown pin because it's in the notch. So all I got to do is pull up on the front of the takedown pin. Now the takedown pin came out so now there's absolutely nothing holding the slide onto the gun except for the rails. So once I do that all I do is slide the slide off the top of, or off the bottom of the gun. Now I have the lower of the gun completely field stripped. I'm going to sit that here. And now to complete the disassembly, I have to pull out the recoil spring. Now it's interesting because to take out the recoil spring, you pull it through the back and up. So you pull it out the back of the slide, not, not the back of the slide, but you pull it towards the back of the slide and it comes out and you can sit that there. And it's the recoil spring is actually partially held in place because on the back 
of the spring. There's this little thing with these little prongs that rest along the barrel, holding it uh, in its orientation. So to pull the barrel out, now the barrel, most modern handguns, uh, to pull the barrel on a semi-automatic, you've got to kind of pull it up and then out, and it pulls out towards the back of the slide. Whereas with the 1911, it actually pulls out the front of the gun. So all you do is keep it upright, in the, and then it just slides and falls out in front of the gun. So that is completely disassembled. And what I guess I'll, I'll describe some of the parts. I'm holding the slide right now. And one of the things you notice about the slide of the 1911 compared to a modern gun is how simplistic it is. Most modern guns have very deep serrations for cocking because, you know, you'll be told that in the fight of it, you're going to need those serrations. You don't want your hand to slip and all that. Whereas the 1911, the majority of the slides is actually flat and smooth. Uh, towards the rear, there is serra there is uh, cocking serrations, but they're, at, they're nothing more than just grooves cut into the slide. It's about an inch wide patch of grooving on either side, and that's it. And they do more than a, enough uh, of a job to be able to cock the pistol. And 100 years has kind of proven that. Now I have seen 1911s that have more aggressive uh, serrations but this is how mine is set up and there is nothing on the front the front the front of the pistol is completely smooth and the only thing you notice on it is the large hole for the barrel and the slightly smaller hole for the recoil spring so that's it for the front of it the top the top is even very plain uh it's obviously with a 1911 it's a curved top but that's also very plain so it's it really is a simplistic gun i mean it was a very robust gun you know you, you can tap on it and you can hear it's a pretty solid chunk of steel and that's obviously because 100 years ago when this was designed it was designed as a full-size service pistol it was designed to be robust it was designed to function and work uh this one being a colt the barrel the barrel is very smooth uh it's all polished out it's, you know, even the feed ramp, the feed ramp is polished out. And it's just the refinement that goes into these pistols is, it really is, it makes them really nice to work on and really nice to shoot. But uh, that's me disassembling the gun blindfolded. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and have a good day.